Cairo, Seattle. It's time to get schooled with a professor, Sean Clayton. Welcome to Schooled with a Professor, and today's topic is the Oakland Raiders. But actually, we're talking to a former San Francisco 49er, talking to Ronnie Lott, who is making a big venture right now to try to keep the Raiders in Oakland. And in fact, uh, he's working with business people down there. He's also working with the city, Alameda County, trying to put an offer together to give to the National Football League. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's not going to go to Mark Davis of the Raiders because Mark seems committed to the idea of having the $750 million coming from the state of Nevada to try to move the team to Las Vegas. But it's interesting that Ronnie lot uh you know certainly one of the greatest football players in nfl history and almost an icon for what he was able to do on the field is getting involved in this and a lot of it is he's been obviously successful on the field great player uh we'll get into that in a little bit but also he's been very successful quietly in the business community involved with a lot of ventures and i know talking to friends of his of all the success stories that he's had in the business world you know whether it's involved in some dot com stuff or of different companies and he's into a lot of different companies and to a point where now he's getting a lot of his contacts and the people that he's known for years and trying to get this uh, bid together with oakland to try to go to the owners and keep the team in the bay area and that's one where you know, it's a loyalty to the area, trying to take care of the people and in, in the area that he was so successful in. And you're talking about, you know, a gentleman, a guy, but a guy that wasn't gentle on the field. Talking about the way that he played, I mean, he was one of the most ferocious hitters, legal hitters, but one of the most ferocious hitters in the NFL. And, you know, he started as a cornerback, but a very physical cornerback, then made the move to safety, and nobody wanted to go across the middle of the field against Ronnie Lott. And his dedication to the game is such that, you know, he had that one incident where he had an, a finger injury. The doctor looks at him in the eyes and says, okay, you have a choice here. We can have uh, shut you down for the season, but if you want to continue to play, you can, but you've got to lose part of that you got to lose part of the finger. And he says, finger gone. Just take it away. And it's like, okay, because he did not want to miss any time. He wanted to stay on the football field. And you talk about old school type of players. That was him. I mean, he was one of the great old school type of players because you know, he he lived for the game itself. He stood up and made hits that uh, you would just say, wow, look at that. And he had a level of play that was so enjoyable to watch because it was the purest form. I mean, football is contact and football is battles and he was out there every day every game battling and you know he was there from the very start of the turnaround of the San Francisco 49ers I mean what they had he was out there with two other rookies and playing defensive back and playing cornerback and started taking that team from a team that floundered for so many years into one of the great dynasties in NFL history and he had established such a great feel on it and such a you know he, he was a leader on the field with the way that he played quiet guy, very intelligent guy, and a guy that just just wanted to make sure that he got the most out of it. And when you watched him play, you know, there's there's certain guys, Hall of Famers that you look at that your eyes revolve to them as the game goes on. I mean, probably nobody better than Lawrence Taylor. I mean, you may watch a New York Giant game, but your eyes go to the the edge of the field watching how he would rush and what he would do and you go, "Wow, look at that." Well, Ronnie Lott was equal in that. So you would watch a little bit deeper into the secondary to watch Watch how he would make his drops, how he would come up and make his hits. I mean, your eyes revolve to him because you're seeing some of greatness. And I know I vote in the Pro Football Hall of Fame and doing it now since 1988. And we have we don't have a lot of safeties there. I mean, I think we have, what, eight or nine. <clears throat> he leads the pack. But clearly one of the greatest safeties who ever played the game just because of the style the ability to make the hits and the ability to make the coverage and just big plays. And, you know, he set that standard and he did it at a time. There were so many good safeties around. There was kind of a great golden age of safeties. But, I mean, he was the leader of the pack. He was the one who did the best and, of course, was the one that, uh, you know, is acknowledged for it by getting easily into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But I still think that what's remarkable 
sometimes is that you talk about players and what happens to them after their careers. And, you know, he has so quietly built such a great reputation in the business community. And he basically takes the same mentality he had on the football field is to, you know, be true to the sport, be true to your job and try to do the best you can work well with teammates. I mean, that's what he was so good at doing. I mean, you watch how Earl Thomas here works so well with the guys in the secondary or Ronnie Lott was able to do it with the guys in his secondary and then just lead and do such great football work. So we're going to talk to Ronnie Lott. We're going to talk about mostly his mission right now. And his mission is to save Raider fans the agony of losing their team to Las Vegas. Coming up next, Ronnie Lott. We are very pleased to be joined by Ronnie Lott, Hall of Fame player from the San Francisco 49ers, and we'll talk a lot about his career, but of course he's on another mission right now. His mission right now is to save the Oakland Raiders and try to put packages together to try to see if the team can stay. And so, Ronnie, first off, congratulations on a great career, and I guess best of luck on this new effort to try to save the Raiders. Yeah, I think that if you think about playing the game of football and you think about the uh, environment of what you have to do in terms of bringing a collective group of people together to try to win games or try to win uh, an opportunity to achieve uh, a victory, uh, you find yourself doing the same thing in this effort. And um, I've been able to assemble and bring together a lot of folks that are people here in the Bay Area that uh, felt that uh, there was an opportunity to keep the team here. They felt that uh, it was an opportunity to entice the city and, the, and entice the uh, county to uh, participate and help out. Uh, and then more importantly, uh, to uh, galvanize the community that over the years have had a long history with the, uh, with the Raiders. And that's, uh, you know, Oakland and, and, and the greater uh, East Bay and, uh, if you think about what uh, the 49ers were able to do in Santa Clara, and they were able to accomplish bringing a, uh, uh, a team to that uh, community, and, and uh, it, it took the same type of effort. It took uh, the effort of bringing uh, the politicians together, bringing the owner together, and bringing uh, the respective parties that could help support it, the uh, various companies and corporations and and so when you think of football uh you you got to have great teammates i had that with jerry rice and joe montana and steve young and roger craig and fred dean and of course charles haley and and then when you think of uh what you're trying to what we're trying to do with the uh, raiders is basically doing the same thing bringing great athletes great people together and and seeing if we get um get on the get on the field and play and and we're com- we're competing against, uh, you know, a formidable foe, and that foe is uh, Las Vegas and the the uh, team that they've assembled, the people that they have put on the field is a uh, an interesting one. Uh, it's a it, it's supported by you know 750 million dollars of, of tax monies that they still have to approve. It, it's not a a done deal, but it's a deal that, um, as everybody has said, that it's it's a deal that people uh, like. And I know the owners uh, like it. Uh, I'm not sure if they like all the uh, relationships that are assembled with the group, but I'm sure they're trying to get all that uh, sorted out. I know that there's some folks that uh, have a relationship with um, Mr. Elderston, and so um, you got to imagine that in that situation as well, they're trying to put together a good team uh, to uh, present to the owners. Yeah, and of course, I guess the big challenge is that uh, at the moment, uh, Mark Davis is only going to stick to the Vegas deal, because I know I saw him at the owners' meeting in Houston back in the fall meeting, and he said that, because uh, I, I, the reason I, I asked him, I said, okay, so what if you get a good offer from Oakland? And this is after I asked him about that. He said he looked at the governor in the face of Nevada and, of course, uh, said, are you trying to use us here? And he says, no, if you do this for us, we will stick by you. And, of course, that's what his plan is. And so technically, I guess your negotiations is more with the league than it is with, I mean, and, and the owners than it is with uh, Mark Davis. 
Well, you know what? I, all I can tell you is that I've, I've, I've spoken to Mark. I, I know Mark. I've known the family. I've known John Madden. I've known a number of people that are uh, close uh, to to him. And, and, and I've spoken to Mark Bedane, and who's the president. And so through this journey, um, you know, I have not lost any respect for what they've accomplished and what they continue to, to accomplish. What I have done is built a relationship of trust and a re- relationship of, of something that goes beyond the game of football. And uh, to me, um, as you pointed out, uh, um, that, that relationship that he built with um, uh, the governor and, and others is a very strong bond, and, and he has a lot of respect for that. And so, to me, I think, at least from how I look at it, in my conversations, I know I hear your conversations because you just said something yeah. that I thought was most appropriate, and that is you, you your conversation with him is what you believe. I have a conversation with him, and I think it's a very, a very intimate one. It's one that uh, I know... Uh, I uh, respect, and so I have to stand by the fact that I think that we'll 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 just wait and see how it all plays out. Yeah, and that's that's the one thing, of course. I mean, with the way that you've handled yourself during your career and your business career, that is well earned, and I'm sure that Mark is going to be there with that. And that's the one thing I think he realizes is that okay, he may have an agreement right now with Nevada, but also he has a bunch of owners that really do not want to see a team move out of one of the biggest markets in the country from the television standpoint. And also there's a bunch of owners that still would like the Raiders to stay in Oakland. Well, I would say this, and and again, I don't know all the owners and I, I don't know all the particulars. I do know that there was a very challenging time in Dallas at one time when there were a number of players that went through some very, tough times. One of those players was a good friend of mine. His name was Charles Haley. He shared some of the things that went on. That was a very difficult uh, environment for him and and somewhat subjected him to uh, a very challenging situation in his life. Uh, Even though they won, and even though they were able to do a a lot of wonderful things in Dallas, everybody knows that that was not a a very, uh, it could have been a very toxic situation it could have hurt some people and so i think that we're all trying to avoid those situations and and because we're all trying to avoid those situations yes they can happen anywhere but the likelihood of it happening in las vegas is 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 different because of the fact that the fan base is new there are so many things that we don't know about vegas uh you have an established fan base you have a healthy fan base and you have a healthy corporate market. Uh, one of the things that I felt really good about uh, in our endeavor is that when we first started down this path, uh, Eric Grubman came out uh, from the NFL and sat with us. And as he uh, sat with us, he had a chance to go around and meet not only city officials in uh, San Francisco, but city officials in the East Bay. He was able to meet uh, folks uh, there were corporate folks from not only San Francisco, U.S. Bank, who has a location there, uh, Suffolk uh, Construction Company, who has a location in San Francisco. So he, he toured all throughout the Bay Area with us and uh, had a chance to meet with the CEO of Clorox, had a chance to meet with the CEO of uh, Kaiser Permanente, uh, he had a chance to meet with a number of corporations, and each corporation said, hey, we would support uh, the effort of keeping the uh, Raiders in town. So um, I look back at that journey in September, and I look at where we're at today. I look at the fact that we got uh, uh, the votes. Uh, we do have, I think, in our minds, the corporate uh, support. Uh, and then, uh, as again, I, I go back to what you, everybody has said, and I think it's the most important thing right now. And really, uh, the most important thing right now is there's no, there's no deal. There's no deal with the Raiders. And there is nothing on the table that puts the Raiders 
uh, in a situation that says that they would stay because we haven't put an offer. We haven't. We don't have anything that um, that's in front of them. So yeah, it's a very challenging time. It's a very challenging time for for us, and uh, not only a challenging time for us, but we also know that the NFL is going to have you know some decisions to make here very fair, fairly soon with the relocation of. Uh, the chargers and them possibly going to Los Angeles. Uh, that's, you know, and that, I know that's tough. I've talked to some of the fans down there, some of the people down there. I know the community is very, uh, hurt by the fact that, uh, it didn't, they weren't able to pass. They weren't able to get the initiative, uh, uh, accomplished. Uh, so there are going to be some fans that are going to be, uh, very somber because they don't have a team there. On the other hand, you have what well, we have, and that is a, a chance to uh, possibly do something. But like I said, we do not have an agreement with Mark Davis. Everybody knows how successful you were on the football field. Hall of Famer, you know, certainly one of the toughest players to play ever in the National Football League. But I think what people don't maybe appreciate is that you were equally successful in the business world. Can you take us through once you got out of football and the things that you did? Because, I mean, you've become a very successful business person. Well, I think it's, it, it starts with the fact that when I was playing, I, I knew uh, early on that um, I wanted to be more than just a football player. Marcus Allen and I always talk about it. We play football, but that's not who we are. Uh, there are a lot of dimensions that we wanted to uh, accomplish in our lives, and we continue to accomplish that and continue to thrive to be around people that are still climbing mountains and still trying to be the best that they can be. And so uh, I think that that is a a choice that you have to have. I think all athletes should take that choice and find themselves, you know, like I've seen others like Junior Bridgman and, you know, Magic Johnson and and some of the others that are are out there like uh, Richardson, the owner of the – of the Panthers and what he's been able to accomplish. There are a number of athletes that have gone on to do wonderful things. And, and in my case, I've had the good fortunes to uh, uh, be involved in uh, an asset management business, um, still in, uh, in the automotive business. Um, I've had the good fortunes to be able to uh, participate and, and uh, buy into a couple of businesses throughout the, uh, throughout the country and, and uh, so I've been very blessed because you got to have great teammates. You got to have great people around you. And uh, I always try to find those great people and try to surround myself around those great people. And uh, that that clearly leads you to success when you have people around you that have the same like mind, same same attitudes, same thoughts on what they want to accomplish in life. And I, uh, you know, I just got to. Uh, uh, um, an introduction to Matt Barkley, and and we're going to get together hopefully here in the in the off season. He's a Trojan, and uh, you know the great Len Swan, who was a great businessman, and Pat Hayden, who um, was a great businessman at, uh, before he became athletic director, and now Len, who's an athletic director. All these guys have done so many wonderful things. Off the field, uh, you know, I've had to, uh, some really great examples of, of, of people that I've met that I've admired, and um, uh, just just and so you you're constantly wanting to be around those type of athletes. I mean, to the point where you know I, I spend my time at the Hall of Fame, you know, talking to you know guys about their life and how they live it and how they continue to live their life, and uh, that's important. Because if you don't find a way to be inspired by others, uh, you won't have dreams. You won't have uh, things that you want to still accomplish in your life. And I, I find myself constantly trying to be around, you know, great people. And and uh, and in and in this endeavor, I've had the chance to meet some of those folks that are interested in helping uh, helping the Raiders stay here in the Bay Area. 
it's also great that you are you know, trying to give back in a standpoint. It's like you're, you're loyal to uh, Northern California, trying to you know, keep something there to invest the time and energy costs, all those different things it really says a lot about yourself because it, it shows that what you're doing here, trying to keep the Raiders there is something that you care about more for just the area itself. Well, I think it's the other thing that I think about is I think about the people that I've met that are have jobs there, uh, people that I know that have been working uh, for the Coliseum and working for the arena and working for uh, the, the the community. Uh, um, I mean, I think that that's important. I think sometimes we forget that that you know there are three or four thousand jobs that, that uh, go to that Coliseum and are participating in that community. I think that the uh, idea of being able to bring 10,000 jobs to that community uh, to build uh, an arena, to hopefully build other uh, ancillary uh, things in that community is, is, is invaluable. And when you see a guy like Kevin Johnson, who did the same thing for his community in Sacramento and not only do do the uh, the uh, uh, investment of of, uh, of of allowing people in his community to believe that they could keep it, but the investment of allowing people to know that, hey man, we can we can we can all get this done. And 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 for me, seeing you know Kevin do what he was able to do, uh, you can't help but try to throw your throw your your uh, your hat in, in 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 on the table and to see if you can participate and be a part of that and and John and I think that's kind of but isn't that what we do when we play sports is we we throw the ball up somebody says hey look let's go play let's see if we can get together and we started that you know those type of concepts as a kid you know playing with your friends that's kind of the same attitude that I've taken here and and uh, I've thrown the ball up. We've had some great, you know, people help. The, the uh, county supervisor, the president, uh, Haggerty, has been phenomenal. Uh, Lynette, the president of the city council, has done uh, a wonderful job. Uh, Larry Reed, that's his district, and one of the councilmen has been there forever. He's been a great teammate. Uh, we got great, you know, companies in the area throughout the area, you know, trying to participate, trying to play wide receiver. So you, you, you're trying to bring, you know, the community together, and and that's that's all you can ask for in life. That's all you. That's all I learned when I was growing up. You know, you go play in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, when I was a kid, you, you learn how to, you know, throw the ball up and play with people. You, I, we moved to another community in Washington D.C. I learned how to play and throw the ball up in that community. And then when I moved to California, I learned how to do it there. So that's all I'm trying to do now is throw the ball up and see how how it uh, unfolds. And hopefully uh, we'll continue to make an effort where we get a consensus. And I think we're going to be able to attract some owners that um, are going to participate in this uh, endeavor and, and be a part of the endeavor. So that's going to be even better. So, you know, it's, Hopefully, something that people realize and that you know we're just trying to do the best for Oakland, and and you know Roger's been a good friend. Goodell's been a good friend of mine. Um, I I I, be, I believe that he's trying to do everything he possibly can to make football better, and because he's done that, I've stepped up and want to do the same thing in my life. Uh, football's given me so much. I got to give football back. A lot of things. I owe it a lot of things because it gave me a lot of things that I have allowed me to be where I'm at. Hey, Ronnie, I want to wish you the best of luck, and hopefully I'll catch up here in the next month or so, and hopefully I'll catch you at an owner's meeting. All right, John. I really appreciate the time, and thank you for allowing me to be on your show. Hey, Ronnie, thank you so much. everyone it's time to ask the professor preposterous twaddle cock
Welcome back to Schooled with the Professor. Remember, each week you get a chance to ask me any question you have relating to the podcast. Just get on Twitter and use the hashtag Clayton Schooled. This week I talked to Hall of Famer Ronnie Lott, and our question comes from Dan in Tampa. He asked, with the recent Rams move to Los Angeles and the impending Oakland Raiders move, do you think there will be a time when hometown crowds don't meet as much to the NFL? No, I think hometown crowds mean so much. And I think that we all know that the NFL is a big business. I mean, it's going to be over $14 billion next year, and eventually it's going to be a $25 billion business. But I think that, you know, the NFL recognizes the value of home field. And understand, we may have two moves or three moves, I guess you could possibly say, over the course of the next couple of years. we got the Rams moving from St. Louis to Los Angeles. Chargers may be moving to Los Angeles, and the Raiders may be to Vegas. But the NFL wants to keep the teams there, and they do it because the value of the hometown brand, the ability for the fans to stay there. And, of course, they were reluctant to do it, but sometimes business takes over, and uh, if the area isn't able to support getting this type of stadium that's going to be needed, then unfortunately it's going to be a move. But there's not a lot of movement anyways, and it hasn't been moving for a long period of time. It's one where, I mean, even on this Oakland move, you can see that the league and owners really would like to not lose a top market like the Bay Area and have a branded franchise. Because, I mean, you watch it now over the next uh, month or so what ratings are going to be for the Raiders because, you know, you see it with the Dallas Cowboys coming back into the playoffs. You see it with Tom Brady and his success. And the Raiders, of course, have not been to the playoffs since 2002, yet they have such a great brand that when you put them on, the ratings skyrocket. And it's going to be that. Now, maybe it's not going to equal some of the ratings we've seen of late from the Dallas Cowboys, but it's such a great brand, and I think people get genuinely excited. They get excited because of the fans. I mean, you look how loyal those fans have been. I mean, they've been in the stands now for, what, since 2002, watching teams that weren't winning. And now they've got the chance to watch a team that's winning. And, of course, they hate the idea of losing the Raiders to Vegas and will try anything possible to try to help prevent that from happening. But they've been there, and, of course, they're the ones that can have it, and the league appreciates that. And that's why that as much as you can look at the, the odds right now of the Raiders moving to Vegas as being very good, you can also look at the fact that the National Football League, Roger Goodell in particular, uh, is still would not want that to happen. I mean, they still have the ability, if a good offer is there, to maybe block the move to Vegas. And there's going to be a lot that's going to play out over the course of the next couple of months. I mean, this one, unlike the situation in San Diego, is going to go a little bit longer. Like, for example, once we get to January 15th, the anticipation is Dean Spanos and his family are going to apply to move to Los Angeles. And if nothing's solid on the table from the area in San Diego, then they're just going to start moving ahead and moving. That's going to be the plan there. But what you can also see is the efforts that are going to be there to, uh, you know, see if there is going to be a chance to try to keep them. But in Oakland, this thing is going to go at least till March when they have the owners meetings in Phoenix to try to see if there's a way that they can patch something together. And Ronnie Lott's going to be the one trying to do that, uh, along with a lot of business people in the Bay Area, to try to see if they can maintain. At the moment, you know, Eric Grubman, who's working for the league as far as a lot of this relocation things, uh, still has not seen a good enough offer that uh, is there from Oakland, but they're still working on that. Ronnie Locke is doing this every day, trying to get this to work. But overall, it's one where the league wants really no movement. They like the areas. They're not trying to expand or anything else. They like the 32-team model. They like the eight divisions with four teams in it. And they certainly don't want to change history too much. I mean, one of the great parts of the history of having the AFC West is that you have pretty much all the teams that were there in the AFL trying to stay, and that's almost more than five decades of football, and there's great rivalries and great football play and all that stuff. I mean, they would really prefer to have the team stay in, in Oakland. Unfortunately, you look at the stadium right now, it's not good enough. The revenue isn't good enough right now to be able to stay. But maybe Ronnie Lott can save the day and also kind of fill what the NFL wants to do. They want to take care of the hometown fans in Oakland and keep this thing going. But right now, it is a battle and a battle that we'll see where it's going to end up going. That's it for this week's edition of Schooled. Thanks for listening. Class dismissed.